I just I never knew what what this suicide thing was about. And so when my brother committed suicide, I just remember feeling like more so sad because I wanted to know where was he? Where was his mind when he did it? What was he thinking? Hey everybody, I'm Marissa. Welcome to my channel, More Mindful. Today is the 26th. For those of you who are new to my channel, this is me being very vulnerable and me sharing a part of my experience that is deeply rooted within me and who I am. My oldest brother had committed suicide and it always the feeling of somberness and just this strange feeling always creeps up around this time of the year because it's rooted, you know, it's a traumatic experience. I talk about mamahood and I am a mama, right? So I had my baby in 2020, so a few years after my brother's death. I had to really meditate and do a lot of inner work to not allow her experience to be mine, if that makes sense. And I'll, I'll, I'll break it down like this. My mother experienced the loss of a son to suicide. My stepmother experienced a loss of a son to homicide. When I got pregnant, I had a lot of thoughts about everything, life, my brothers, my values, you know, just emotions. We chose not to learn our baby's gender, but deep within myself, I knew that I was having a son after going through the pregnancy and the feeling the baby kicking and poking and prodding and moving around and actually birthing my son in the water, having a successful natural water birth the same way that I had envisioned it years prior, I, I felt this intense love that every mama knows like, it's a love that just can't be put into words. It's a love that is out of this world. And so I just, I'm, I'm so tense. <laughs> and so um, the love that I felt for my, my son made me think about my mother, my stepmom, and that they felt the same love when they birthed their child, their children. And that became scary because it's like, you go through your whole pregnancy with this, this child, you know, and you birth this child and you spend time with this child and no one ever thinks about burying their child, you know, or any of that stuff. But I noticed that when people would talk about the future, when it had to do with my son, my son, I would say, God willing, yeah, when he's old enough to start climbing trees, God willing, yeah, when he's old enough to have a conversation, God willing, or, you know, whatever it may be, um, I would say God willing because I felt that I was mm, traumatized. Not because of my brother's death per se, but because of the emotions that I know my mothers, both my mothers, my mom and my stepmom felt losing a child. 
I kind of wanted to talk a little bit more about my eldest brother in this in this video. The first thing I thought about or I always think about when I hear suicide, I get very sad, you know, because I know like for everybody that's a traumatizing event. It's a traumatizing thing. When I was in middle school, I think bulimia and anorexia was really big. So they had a huge assembly and they would show a documentary on anorexia, bulimia, and um, I can't remember what it what it's called, um, but like eating disorders, uh, yeah. And so it all had to do with image and insecurities and self-consciousness and, and all of these things. As a young-minded person, I remember thinking, wow, like, why would you do that? <laughs> I didn't understand, you know, what, what, what would the purpose be and how could you even do something like that? I didn't understand. I didn't understand at all. And so, it, you know, like any young-minded person, you just kind of go about your life. And I didn't think anything about it after that. But, um, you know, when I was 24, my brother was 26, and he committed suicide. And from my understanding, he had tried before, but I didn't know about it. I knew he had issues, insecurities, parent, parents, parental, familial issues, um, who am I issues. When my brother committed suicide, I just remember feeling like more so sad because I wanted to know where was he, where was his mind when he did it? What was he thinking? You don't know what predicament people are in when when they decide to, to, to do that, when they decide that their life has come to an end, you don't really know what people are thinking um, or what state of mind they're in or what state um, they're in physically. You know, sometimes I wonder if he was high up and sometimes I wonder maybe that would, that makes me feel better to know he was high up, was he? You know, I don't know. I remember the the moments learning that he was gone physically. I remember the moments after that. Uh, some of the um, hardest moments were the, the moments after, just before his funeral. Um, we were staying with my grandmother because neither one of us was strong enough to really just do anything in our own house after that. Um, it's one of those things like no matter how, I, I can't I can't forget you know no matter how much you make peace with something like that I'm still human I still think about it especially around this time I miss him and it's not that I wish he was here because I'm not I don't think like that it's more so just knowing that there are so many people out here that don't feel like they can be their true selves They feel uncomfortable being who they are. They feel boxed in and they feel sad that they were dealt the hand they were dealt in life and dealing with abandonment issues and love, lack of love or just feeling like they're a burden on people because they're always sad or struggling. It's sad to me that there are so many people out here who struggle every day in darkness, 
even when it's light outside. Sad, you know, and that's what that's what makes me me cry, you know. I can't tell you how many times I have said aloud that I forgive you. You know I forgive you. <laughs> because you made a, ch a choice for yourself, you know. You didn't go out doing a lot of people dirty or taking your frustrations of life out on others. You made a choice. And though that choice may hurt me or may have hurt me and others connected to you, I also acknowledge that you felt or didn't want to be a, a burden. And that's that's my assumption, but I feel deeply about that, that you didn't want to be a burden to those living. So I say all the time aloud to my brother, I forgive you. I forgive you. I don't think you were being selfish. You know, every man is responsible for his own destiny. So you weren't being selfish. You were doing and making your choice. You chose your path, you know? Um, yeah. I am one of those people <laughs> that says, when you're feeling sad, go to nature. When you're feeling down or you want to connect to someone that's no longer in this realm, but maybe an ancestor or someone who you feel you had a connection with um, and you want to ignite that connection, go to nature and they'll meet you there. I started writing after my brother, my eldest brother passed transition. I started writing this, um, this book. Um, and the intro was a detailed description of where I was in the moments of writing my book. And I was outside, my mom, I lived with my mom. She had a nice balcony, she always had nice apartments. <laughs> so she had a nice balcony. There was a tree that was kind of almost as high as our balcony and there was a bird on the tree just chirping away and I remember just watching it and watching the grass like the blades of grass sway and I remember just watching nature and watching life itself and I felt like I could breathe and I felt alive just feeling renewed feeling like I had purpose in life still I decided to make this video because Sometimes when you experience loss, sometimes we try to distract ourselves or drown ourselves in other things as a distraction because we don't want to be sad or we don't always want to look at the month or the time as if it's some kind of anniversary, you know, of death <laughs> or something. We want to look at life, you know. It's a fact of life that life is synonymous with death and vice versa. Every time a person transitions, a, a, a baby is born, a baby transitions from the womb to this realm. It's synonymous. You can't have one without the other, the law of polarity. And I think that within myself, I felt like I didn't really want to run away from sadness or pain or this experience, it's a part of my experience. I can't really run from it, you know? It's like, talk about it and share it and let it out. Our experiences root us in this thing called life. And I think coming into this collective consciousness, we are now sharing more, hearing each other more, listening more, actively listening and learning from each other a lot more. So if this video resonates with you, please just take the time to share anything about yourself, 
your experience or just let me know that you relate and that you appreciate you know the vulnerability um and with that i say peace and love y'all